Would you please stand? bow before you today and we thank you for this opportunity to gather together for Sean and Kate but we pray that your hand will be upon upon this, this service today and that you would lead and guide everything that's said and done we thank you Lord for this this time and putting this couple together how you've orchestrated and you've ordained events and you've connected the dots in their life and uh, we just praise you Lord for what you're going to do we ask for your blessing on this day in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Who gives us beautiful bride to be married today? Her mother and I. You guys may be seated. In Genesis chapter 2, God said it's not good for a man to be alone. He said, I'll make a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God, he caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and he closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he taken out of the man. He brought her to the man and said, uh, Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. And it's for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. And just as permanent as the rib was removed from Adam to create Eve, so is our vow and marriage commitment. Two become one, one heart, one mind, one body, through the Holy Spirit of God. Marriage was initiated, orchestrated, or, or ordained by God, not a man. And it's an agreement, a promise, a vow, first to God and then each other. And this vow and promise that you make today is... Permanent with God first and then with each other. And love Him. Love God with, with all that you are. With every ounce of your being. And love Him passionately and deeply. And then love one another passionately and deeply. The greatest commandment in the Bible, Jesus said, was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind and strength. And then love each other as we love ourselves. Apart from Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, love is the greatest gift given to us. Paul wrote about that in 1 Corinthians 13. He said, If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all His mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, Jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. So today, honor God. Honor each other by loving and living out the vows you make today. So Sean, will you take Katie to be your wife? Will you love her and commit yourself to the Lord in order to fulfill her as a person? Will you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve her in sickness and in health, loving her as Christ loved? surrendering yourself completely and unconditionally for her. If so, in your honor of the vows today, say I will. Absolutely, I will. And Katie, will you take Sean to be your husband? Will you love him and commit yourself to the Lord in order to fulfill him as a person? Will you promise to love, respect, honor, trust, serve him in sickness and in health, loving him as Christ loved, surrendering yourself completely and unconditionally for him? If so, in your honor of these vows today, say I will. As a symbol of their vow and commitment to God and one another, the vow, uh, 
bride and groom are going to exchange rings. One thing I want you to notice about the ring, if you look at it, one, there's no end to it. Absolutely no end. Let there be no end to what God does today. And then, and then a circle is complete. So when you look at that ring, every time you look at it, remember there's no end. It's complete. Do what it takes to complete one another. And then last, it's a gift. Today on, on your wedding day. Just like God gave us a gift in Jesus Christ today, uh, you're giving one another the gift of each other. So remember each time you look at that to remember those things. There's no end that's complete in your God's gift to one another. So Sean placed the ring on the ring finger. Katie's left hand, repeat after me. Katie with this ring. Katie with this ring. I pledge my life. I pledge my life. My love. My love. And my commitment to you. And my commitment to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And Katie, place the ring on the ring finger. Sean's left hand, repeat after me. Sean. With this, ring, with this ring, I pledge my life, life my, love, my love, and my commitment to you. In, commitment to you. in the name of the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, these are the hands of your best friend. Young and strong and vibrant with love. That are holding each other's today on their wedding day. And each promise to love one another, love you, and cherish one another through the years for a lifetime of happiness. These hands will work alongside one another as together they build their future. These hands will love one another passionately and with the slightest touch comfort one another like no other. These are the hands that will countless times wipe away tears from each other's eyes, tears of sorrow and tears of joy. These hands will hold one another when fear or grief engulfs their heart. These hands will give each other strength and support when they can't do it alone. These hands, when they're wrinkled and aged, will still be reaching out for one another, still giving one another the same unspoken tenderness with just a touch. May these hands today that are joined be blessed. May they always hold each other, love one another, have the strength to hang on during the storms of life that are going to come. And may they remain faithful to God as they work together building a marriage relationship that honors and glorifies you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And at this time, the couple are going to take communion together. This husband and wife. My life is yours. My hope is in you only And my heart you hold Cause you made this sinner holy and holy Your glory is so beautiful I fall onto my knees in awe And the heartbeat of my life Is to worship in your life Cause your glory is so beautiful Cause your glory is so beautiful
perfect song because God is good. Isn't he? When we met, we talked about what Sean and Katie wanted to do. They shared their story and how God had orchestrated, and I believe God connects the dots in our life. And sometimes, you know, when you got a lot of dots on a piece of paper, you really can't make out what it is. Sometimes God has to connect those dots, and you got to step back, and, and then you can see a clear picture of what He's trying to do. And I think He's really done an incredible thing in both of your lives. And, uh, in Matthew 7, 24 and 27, Jesus told His disciples, uh, He said, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it will not collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And I think you guys have done an incredible job of starting on the right foot and building on the bedrock, on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Make Him the very center of this relationship. And He's going to absolutely rock your world and do things that you can only dream of and imagine in your life and in your relationship. And I want to challenge you to make Him number one. Uh, Psalm 127.1 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain who build it. And then Jesus Himself said in John 15.5, one of my favorite verses, If a man remains in me and I remain in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So it's in that relationship and in this relationship. Three together. You become the man and the woman and the husband and the wife, the mother and the father that he wants you to be, that you're designed to be. Paul finishes up 1 Corinthians 13. He finishes up this way, talking about love. He says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know, just as I am also known. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. Let's pray. Lord, today, Sean and Katie have made a commitment to you and one another today in front of family and friends. We pray right now that you would be the very center of this marriage. Father, that it would be everything you want it to be and more than they could ever hope for, imagine, or dream of. Lord, as they grow in their relationship with one another, I pray their love for one another grows deeper and stronger than they've ever known. Lord, that it is indeed a you-before-me kind of love, the same kind of love that you had for us when you died on the cross. Father, join them together right now, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, if they, as they've never known, as only you can do, one flesh. Father, I pray this marriage and their family would bless you and that they would be a blessing to you and a witness to the world of who you are and what we have in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And by the power vested in me by the state of North Carolina, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Sean, you may kiss your beautiful wife. <laughs>
She loves me like 
You made them and keep them for many years through laughter, opportunities, and of course through tears. Katie is my best friend. We met at Meredith College. We instantly had much in common, little to our knowledge. Our relationship would grow to now be 14 years strong. Some memories are so short, but many are so long. Katie has a heart of gold that she opened up to me. She welcomed me like a sister, that I could easily see. I became fond of her serene nature and of her character too. We grew closer over the years and our friendship is true. I recall several memories that still make me laugh when our tour guide was the one who fell out of the raft. <laughs> Or the time when she took her new rollerblades for a spin, she took a little tumble and almost busted her chin. <laughs> Katie's known for sayings like, making a long story short. Or saying, well, or actually, before making a retort. No matter the day, she always has a great story to tell. But be patient, ready to listen. Short story, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Among all these memories, Katie and Sean met. I wouldn't change it at all, not then and not yet. Minus the white flip-flops and the hundreds of white shirts, Sean is Katie's perfect bachelor, for better or for worse. The love they share is from above indeed. The closer they have become, it's obvious that it's a seed. It's a seed that will be watered and nurtured by God himself. Their love will grow abundantly, their marriage full of wealth. So Katie and Sean, I love you both. To you and your family, I give this toast.
just makes me melt And I, 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 I don't think I can resist But I've never been one to kiss and tell A love this true can't be subdued So I'm going Show it all the